I'm Chris Flanagan, and this is Brewcast TV. Welcome to Amagang Brewery. Chris Flanagan with Brewcast.tv, and today we're in Cooperstown, New York, with Phil Leinhardt, the head brew, uh, the brew master. So we're saying brew master at Amagang Brewery. We're going to do a quick rundown of their main five brews here: the Amagang Abbey, the Three Philosophers, the Witta, right, uh, the Hennepin, and the uh, Rare Voss. So, which one should we start with today? Well, we'll start with our lightest one, the Witta. All right, great. So this is a uh, similar to a Belgian wit. Yeah. You know? Is that how they would say wit? In yeah. Uh, wit or vit, I guess. Vit. Yeah. But yeah, this has uh, a good percentage of unmalted wheat as well as malted wheat and uh, some oats in there. Oh, cool. And the cloudiness. That's nice. that's normal for a, a wheat. Yeah, that's it? a characteristic of the style. And is this one spiced at all? Yep, with uh, traditional spices, coriander and uh, orange peel. Well, it smells great, and they come through really well. Um, it has a nice, bright, refreshing mm -hmm. aroma and, and flavor. It finishes nice and uh, quick. Yeah, I think quick's a good word for that because it really hits up front. You get a, a sharp. Right, it has a fast end. Yeah, it just kind of kind of comes through and makes you want to take another sip, right? Yeah. Mm. Great, all right. Okay, this is our Hennepin, uh, which uh, is our Saison style beer. Okay. Um, has more bitterness and a slight hop aroma. Uh, also spiced, and the characteristic one is uh, ginger, oh, okay. which gives it a nice little snap to it. Now I've seen the word uh, farmhouse ale attached to Saison before. What, what does that mean? Where that Well, I mean, the, there? Saisons were first brewed on farmhouse breweries in the Belgian countryside. Okay. Uh, brewed in their cooler months to be consumed in the summer by the farm hands during uh, the harvest and in the summertime. Okay. You get the same mouthfeel almost as the Witta, but a completely yeah. different flavor. Yeah, it's a little, it's a stronger beer. It has more alcohol, a little bit heavier, a little fuller, but uh, a little more bitterness too, right? Yeah, yeah that, that no. has the tongue pretty, pretty solid. That bitterness gives it a, a crispness, as well as the ginger gives it a little bit oh, of yeah. that snap. That's definitely a, um, a very flavorful beverage there. Yeah, it's our biggest seller actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so what's up next? Uh, we have our Rao Voss, which is Flemish for Sly Fox. Okay. Uh, there's a famous cafe in Brussels with the name Rare Voss, where I hear some of the Belgian professional cyclists go to have a drink and something to eat. Uh, it's an amber, what they might call, they refer to sometimes as a uh, cafe beer, oh, okay. cafe amber. And why, why is that? Is it more uh, uh, acceptable to different tongues? Do, do, do well, more crowd? I, I mean, I, I think it has something to do with, you know, British pale ales were and are very popular in Belgium. Uh, and I think it's some Belgian brewers made their versions of, of uh, British pale ales. Okay. It's a bit sweeter on the nose than the, the other. Yeah, it has. Uh, the spice that's really up front in this is uh, grains of paradise. I mean, relatively up front. Um, also has some uh, caramel malts for the color and sweetness, and oh, okay. a Belgian aroma malt. It gives a slightly fuller, sweeter. Absolutely full. Uh, this is very drinkable. It's not real high alcohol, and uh, so it's something you can have a few of. Good beer. And we'll move on to our three philosophers. It's 
and we'll taste that before the Abbey, even though it's higher alcohol, okay. it's, it's a little bit lighter tasting. Okay. Uh, so I think as far as the palate, it's probably better to taste this before. So this, the name Three Philosophers, what, what, what inspired that? Well, it, the beer came from a, uh, a competition uh, where uh, people were supposed to write about their dream beer and describe it. Okay. And the, then they, uh, I forget who did this competition, but it was before I started here. But uh, then the winning essay that they awarded uh, Brewery Home Gang to brew the beer. Oh, okay. And I'm not sure how the name came to being. Huh. Uh, but it was originally just a one off, but it's so popular that uh, now it's one of our main beers. And the recipe's been the same since it was yeah. started? It's always been a blended beer, right? Yep, has uh, about 2% by volume uh, Creek blended into it. Excellent. And the Creek is, is uh, Belgian for cherry? Yes. Okay. So for those who kind of, I'm sure some people are wondering, when we say it's 2% cherry or Creek, that's a, a, an ale that was aged with cherries? And right. Stuff? Okay. Well, it's got a nice uh, cherry wood color there almost. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's partly from the, excuse me, partly from the creek and from the, uh, the darker malts. Okay. But, um. Excellent clarity for. It's a nice yeah. woody, I almost, sometimes I get like a maple syrup aroma slight on this and, and some. Well, when you prunes. say it, it actually becomes prevalent. <laughs> that yeah. maple. Prunes, dates, I get on there, like dark, you know, darker fruits. Lots going on in there. Lots. I know that this is a favorite of a lot of the people on my homebrew forum. Mm -hmm. It has a nice firm end. It's not too sweet. Ooh, that's really nice. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, I'm definitely noticing the pattern here that your beers are extremely clean and, and it's really easy to pick out the, the, the character. So this is our Abbey, uh, which is our take on a Belgian Abbey beer. This is the original brand that was produced at Brewery Home Gang. Okay. And by Abbey, um, that style would mean it was brewed kind of traditional... Uh, brewed by monks in a monastery or, okay. or an Abbey. So I know y'all have a cave-aged version of this. What what would you say the, the cave aging process actually does? Well, it just... Um, the, the the beer ages, gets a little oxidized, and, and with okay. with a with a paler beer, you know, oxidation is definitely a, a negative. Right, hands right, down. right. But with some of these darker beers, uh, it'll make the the beer will take on some somewhat of a sherry port like quality, which is, cool. is actually kind of nice. Uh, is there a pretty constant temperature in y'all's cave? Yeah, I believe it's about fifty fifty five. So this has some interesting spices in it, uh, licorice root, star anise, cumin. You get some of the yeast character in the nose mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So it also seems a pattern that uh, among these Belgian ales, you get some real fruity tones to the aroma and the flavor. And that's probably oh, from yeah. the yeast and, and, and the temperatures you ferment the temperatures, at. okay. Very estery. That's really cool. Um, it, it, it makes for a beer of its own. Uh, it almost gives it some wine-like qualities when you're when you're sipping a nice Belgian. Yeah, absolutely. Style. And then the you know the bottle conditioning and the high carbonation. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a real characteristic of Belgian ales. Uh, you know, the bottle condition of Belgian ales is their relatively high carbonation. Uh, so, you know, it really kind of lifts uh, the beers. <laughs> Well, Phil, thanks for having us here, man. Yeah, I thanks, thank you. Chris. Thanks for watching the tasting here at Amigang Brewery. Be sure to check out our next episode that features an exclusive tour of the brewery and their brewing processes. I'm Chris Flanagan, and this is Brewcast.tv.